Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 personal favorite Akira Kurosawa movies. Yes, for almost a almost a year and a half now, I've had constant recommendations to do my top 10 favorite Akira Kurosawa films. And I always said to everyone who recommended it to me, I'm like, I'll get to it. Don't worry, I will get to it. And the reason I kind of procrastinated this top 10 list is because I never saw all of Akira Kurosawa's films. I saw two films, uh, that's it, but in the past year, I actually watched all his films. It took a while. It took like a year because some of his films are so friggin' hard to find. Thank God I have Turner Classic Movies, but yeah, some of his movies were really hard to find stuff. And yeah, his movies take a lot of time to watch them because most of his movies are like three hours long. And yeah, and there's other movies I had to watch and everything. So yeah, it took me a little bit to watch all of Kier Kurosawa's films, but I finally got to watch his entire filmography. And this is my personal my personal favorite movies of his. Uh, yes, this is a personal list. Some of my favorites are most people's favorites, but again, some people might have different orders for these movies. I these are just they're just my personal favorites. So yeah, that's the point of a whole point of a subjective list. So yeah, let's get to it. Here's my top ten personal favorite Akira Kurosawa movies. And for top ten list, you obviously gotta have your honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are. <clears throat> Stray Dog, Red Beard, Hakuchi, No Regrets for Our Youth, High and Low, and I Live in Fear, and Senjaro. All great Akira Kurosawa films. Just couldn't make the top 10 list, but did make my top 10. What is my number 10? My number 10 is Yojimbo. Yojimbo stars Toshiri, Toshiri Musin. Is that, is that how you say his name? This is a great film, and Toshiri Musin played in almost all of, most of uh, Akira Kurosawa's films. He's a fantastic actor, amazing Japanese actor. He's amazing in this movie. This is a fantastic story. It's character driven. It's got great action scenes, great cinematography, great edi editing. It's a well structured, constructed film. It's interesting how the story is laid out. It's very fresh. It's very original. A lot of movies, and movies like Fistful of Dollars, basically borrowed story tropes from this movie. Actually, a lot of Akira Kurosawa's films are borrowed from a lot of a lot of movies borrowed tropes from Akira Kurosawa's work, especially like his big ones that I'll be getting to. But yeah, this one, Fistful of Dollars story, is basically the same story as Yojimbo. Yojimbo is just a better movie, even though I love Fistful of Dollars, one of my favorite westerns. But yeah, this is a fantastic samurai story, and I absolutely love. It, it's one of my favorites. Coming number nine is Metadayo. Metadayo or Metadayo? I, I don't know the pronounce. Uh, the I don't know the pronunciation of this, but uh, this is the last film uh, directed by Akira Kurosawa, and this is a damn great film. This is made in the year two thousand, and it's about four students. And this is during the post war. And they become they become the like good friends with this literary. And yeah, his name is uh, what's his name? I've written down here. Hikayan Ichidu, uh, Lichidu, Ichida, Ichida, yeah, yeah. Hikayan Ichida, Lichida, or whatever, I'll put it up there, yeah, the pronoun- Like, yeah, I'm terrible at pronunciation of certain names, even just normal names, like, I can't even say other, like, normal names, like, Jack. Well, I just said it now, but anyways, uh, this is a very good story, a very good dramatic story, with actually a lot of good comedy, like, Akira Kurosawa, I never thought he could do really good comedic, uh, good, really good comedic films, and this movie actually has a lot of great comedy, great characters, great performances, great dramatic scenes, the relationship between this literary and all these students is a really great relationship, it's an interesting story with great writing, and it's, it's a fantastic ending film for a great director like Akira Kurosawa, and yeah, I absolutely love it. Coming number eight is the movie Scandal. Scandal is probably one of the most underrated uh, uh, Kira Kurosawa films. Yeah, this is, again stars uh, Toshiro Musin. Like he is fantastic in this movie. Basically, this is a, just a great story about the press and how the press can basically ruin someone's life. About this lawyer who basically gets his life just tarnished by the press and stuff. And yeah, it's about misunderstandings and stuff and just how ugly and disturbing and just horrible certain people are in this world. And it's a, it's a great movie about society and stuff. And it's a fantastic film. Again, great performances, great writing. It really hit me. And like, yeah, this is a, a film that not a lot of people talk about. I know a lot of people like love movies like Red Beard and they love like High and Low. And I thought those were pretty decent to Kira Kurosawa films, but I found this movie more real and just more impactful and yeah and I know this movie's not on a lot of top 10 lists but I think it's one of his best. Coming to number 7 is Kagamusha. Kagamusha and Ether, yeah, I'm butchering some of these styles of it but yeah Kagamusha stars, uh, I have his name right here, his name is Tatsuya 
Tatsuya Navada? No, Nakadi. Tatsuya Nakadi. He's the guy that's in uh, the movie Ran. He's uh, he's the king guy in uh, Ran. Yeah. Kagamusha is a really great film. I actually just watched this the other day, and it was really good. It's a very brutal story about revenge and stuff, and yeah, again, this movie is filled with a lot of very unlikable characters, but against how the story is told, how Kurosawa directs this movie, I love how it's written, I love how it's acted. Akira Kurosawa is a kind of guy, he was way ahead of his time, way ahead of his time. The way he told stories, directed stories, wrote his stories, it's a really great film. It's overly long at times, but I still really enjoyed it. I was really captivated by it. It's very dark, it's very brutal at times, and yeah, it just really freaking stuck with me. And again, one of my favorites. Coming number six is, speaking of, uh, the movie Ran. Ran. Ran is a great film. This is an interesting story about this king, again, played by that actor I just said. Yeah, don't make me say his name again. Again, I don't want to butcher names here, but yeah. He's this king who has these three sons, and he basically wants to give his firstborn son, he wants to give him the power and stuff, but his third son doesn't agree with it, so he banishes his third son, and then when that happens, his first son overpowers him and basically tries to kill him and rule all the kingdoms, and the second son is with him. And so the king needs his third son's help, you know, to get his kingdom back and stop the first son that he never trusted in the, to be in with. And yeah, great story. It's a great two hour and 45 minute, almost epic. I call this like an epic film. This is a really well executed and structuralized film. I love it. Cinematography, the action scenes are so freaking great. Very brutal, very gritty. Like, oh, it's the maddest stuff that happens in this movie. This, again, it was a really violent movie, and it was a little hard to watch at some moments, and yeah, I absolutely loved it. It's very emotional, especially what happens in the, the third act of the film. It's really brutal, it's really dark. The costumes look fantastic. I love the score as well, and yeah, definitely one of the best. Coming number five is The Hidden Fortress. The Hidden Fortress, again, like all of Kira Kurosawa's films, are su it's such a well-constructed film and a movie that was way ahead of its time. George Lucas even says, like, how he came up with Star Wars, he borrowed from, like, a lot of stories, like the old school, like, uh, Flash Gordon and stuff, and uh, The Hidden Fortress. The Hidden Fortress was one of the films he borrowed from for, to make Star Wars, because he, George Lucas, looked up to Akira Kurosawa and his work, and you can tell with this movie, there's a lot of hints of Star Wars in it, and it's fantastic. Again, it's the battle of good and evil and stuff, and again, great characters, great performances, well, a really well-directed film with great cinematography, a fantastic score, and just a damn well-made movie by a masterful director. Coming number four is Throne of Blood. Throne of Blood, again, stars uh, Tashiro Musin, like, uh, yeah, he's great in all the Akira Kurosawa films, and he's, again, fantastic in this movie. This is the, Mac the, the Macbeth story, yes. We've seen the story of Macbeth and stuff, the William Shakespeare play. Definitely not my favorite Shakespeare play, but still a damn good play, and yeah, this is basically a Japanese samurai version of Macbeth. Literally, the story of a king who wants power and stuff, and him and his crazy wife get it to listen to these witches. He betrays his friend, kills them, and the other king from the other side ends up killing him and stuff. And yeah, the story of Macbeth. If you know Macbeth, this is what it is. The story of Macbeth, and it's awesome. It's probably the best adaptation, film adaptation of Macbeth ever. It's fantastic. Again, I just watched this movie like a week ago, and it was really great. Again, like Rayanne, it's very brutal with its action scenes. Again, once again, a way ahead of its time sort of film, and yeah, it's raw, it's gritty, it's dark, it's awesome, and yeah, I love Macbeth, so of course I love this movie. Coming number three is Ikiru. Yes, Ikiru is another fan favorite, and well, rightfully so. It's a beautiful movie. This is definitely one of the most atmospheric, uh, slow-paced Akira Kurosawa films, and that's why I love it so much. Basically, it's about a guy who gets cancer, and basically, he's just out to find the meaning of his life, and life in general. And again, this is no spoilers, just go check this movie out, because a lot of people haven't seen it, but mostly Akira Kurosawa films have, but it's a very overlooked film. It's again, very slow film, a very mellow film, very melancholy, very abstract film, very atmospheric and stuff, and it's fantastic. The way it's shot, the way it's portrayed, the way it's directed, the way it's executed, everything about this movie is absolutely beautiful. It's a Christmas movie too, yeah, a Christmas Curacao film. That's what it should have been called. No, it shouldn't have. Awful title. Great title. Anyways, 
Ikiru is a really great film with great performances. It's very sad. It's very emotional. It's very humanistic. The way it talks about the human condition in this film is absolutely brilliant. Definitely one of the smartest Ikiru Kurosawa films and definitely one of my favorites. Number, number two is Rashomon. Rashomon almost made my number one because I love this story. This is actually, I think, the sh one of the shortest Ikiru Kurosawa films. This is like an 82 minute film. And basically, uh, again, I don't want to spoil it. Like, if you haven't seen Ikiru Kurosawa's films, just go check them out. But it's basically. It's three different stories about one event. Basically, this guy got murdered and a girl got raped. And basically, this guy's on trial for it, but we don't know what really happened. And three different people have three different stories of what happened. How did this person get killed? Did this girl get raped or not? And you don't find out what story is real until the very ending, which I not, will not spoil, but... It's a very interesting and fascinating movie. Again, the way it's directed, Akira Kurosawa did an ama amazing, masterful job. The performances are so freaking good. And it's it's a mystery. I love a good mystery, and it is. And like I was thinking the whole time, from start to finish, I want to know, like, what happened here? What is going on? Even though how the movie begins with the guys in the rain and stuff, it's this very dark and dingy film. And, I was hooked instantly then when this movie started, and yeah, it's such a captivating film, and again, I love a good mystery, and you do not see the ending coming, and it's just so well done. The writing for this movie is just spectacular. This is hands down the best written Akira Kurosawa film, and definitely one of my favorites. Just my number one's just a tad better, but I really wanted to put Rashomon at number one because I love this film so much, but my number one is my number one for a reason, because I do think it is his best, but yeah, Rashomon, amazing. And my number one favorite Akira Kurosawa film is pretty much everyone's favorite, and that's Seven Samurai. Yeah, Seven Samurai is almost a four-hour movie. It's amazing. It's the Magnificent Seven story, but again, this is the story that started the Magnificent Seven. Magnificent Seven got its story from Seven Samurai. I love it. Everything about it, it's perfection almost. It's amazing. Cinematography, the editing, the performances, the production, the costumes, the score, the sound, everything. Even the, the action scenes, some people might find dated. I found them very dark, very raw, very well constructed. I love it. I, all the great actors in all of Kyu Kurosawa's films are all mostly in this film. They're all great. I love the story with these seven samurai pr protecting this village from all these bandits and stuff. They're murdering their people, trying to kill their women, steal their food. And these seven samurai are fighting against these bandits. What the hell would the villagers, of course, the farmers? It's a really great film. It's so epic. On a, a huge scale, it is an epic film. The greatest samurai movie you will ever watch in your entire life. The greatest Japanese film you'll probably ever watch in your entire life. One of the greatest foreign films ever. And hands down the best Akira Kurosawa film. So yeah, that was my top 10 personal favorite Akira Kurosawa films. So in the comment section below, please tell me, what are your top 10 favorite Akira Kurosawa films in your opinion? I know everyone has a different opinion, but yeah. Give me your thoughts and opinions. Comment below. Let me know. And as always, for this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.